A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. Here we have a short showcase of what we will be creating in this tutorial series. So uh, this is a card widget system. So we have the ability for now to add cards. So these cards are added to what is considered your hand and uh, you are able to browse around through them, inspect the different cards by hovering over them and they will displace themselves in uh, certain ways to uh, allow that. Uh, we have also created some parameters that allow communication with the widget system which allows you to change things like uh, the angle you want to have and the spacing you want to have between the cards and their arc height in between them and also the amount of uh, displacement for the cards when you're looking to inspect the cards so you can change that you should uh, pull cards aside a little bit less or you should uh, be dragging something further up in the air uh, something like that so you have these different uh, parameters here that configure how you can make your card hand look so this could be sort of a something to if you were cr to create a, a game or project or something related to some system like this you could have this as your sort of uh, trial to see what uh, kind of um, variables you want to have to make your card hand look in a certain way and uh, find a, a good look for that game or project or you could have this as sort of a, a configuration for uh, the player so that they could uh, change their card hand in in a game if you wanted to use that uh, in addition to what we've shown uh, so far we also have the ability to uh, take a card and drag it around in the world and we also have the ability to sort the cards where you can uh, take a card and place it somewhere else inside of uh, the grouping of cards. So you can place them wherever you want to, based on where you're holding uh, your mouse with, with the card, card that you're dragging around. Uh, so yeah, that's all the functionality that we will be creating inside of... Also, we have the, the base, very basic like placeholder cards here, which is created in uh, a data table. And then in this case, we're just randomly adding them to our hand from uh, the add card button here. Um, so, so those are all the different parts that we will be creating. Welcome back. So in this uh, tutorial series, we're going to be doing something pretty cool. We're going to be creating a sort of uh, card hand UI widget uh, thingamabob. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll go through all the different parts. We'll uh, do as far as we can in, in this episode. I'm assuming it's going to be multiple episodes because there's a lot that we're going to be doing. Hopefully it will be uh, understandable the whole way through and I will try to explain all the, the important parts as we encounter them as well. Um, to start off with, what we have here today is we have a Unreal Engine project 5.1. Uh, this should work fine in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5 in later episodes as well. Uh, for now, it opens up, uh, since it, this is a blank project, we open up in an untitled uh, level like this. So we'll start off with just saving the current level as, and then we'll call this our card UI map or something like that. All right, so now we have our, our map done. Let's start actually creating some things related to the actual card UI. Uh, we open up our content browser and we create a folder to structure our stuff a little bit better. We can call this uh, card UI. Uh, the most central part to a card hand sort of system would be most likely the card. So let's start off with creating the card. We right click, go to user interfaces and widget blueprint to create that user widget, which is up here. We can call this w underscore card. Now the card will dock up here and this is the designer for that. How the card looks uh, is of less importance in the beginning really now because you could always come back and change it a lot later. It doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, but we'll make something that looks at least uh, presentable, I think. Starting off, we might want to have the ability to sort of uh, control the dimensions of what we are creating. So a size box could be a good way to start. So we'll drag one of those components in here. 
And to begin with, we might just want to have a size spot that controls our width and then the height is uh, decided later upon, depending on what kind of items we have inside of it. Uh, or you might want to do this completely from the beginning. For now, we're going to be overriding the width only and we're going to put some value in here. So for now, 250 will be fine. Uh, we will click uh, fill screen and change this to desired on screen to see uh, what it will actually look like. So this is the, the screen space it will be taking up uh, currently. Next, we might want to have something that sort of controls the outer layout of the, the card itself. Uh, so a border could be a convenient uh, article for this. So we drop in a border in here. Uh, inside of the border, uh, we might want to have something like uh, rounded corners and stuff like that. To achieve this, uh, we can actually get back to that in a little bit actually, so it's more clear. Now that we're inside of the sort of border area, we may want to have uh, a lot of control when it comes to how things are placed within uh, the card itself. So we might want to have multiple things. So we might want to have something like an overlay as a component for inside the border here. And inside the, of this overlay, we can uh, then place things a little bit how we want them to. One of the things that we might want to have uh, is maybe something like a image that is the sort of background image for the card or just something that controls our color. Um, so we can start off with uh, going up here and typing in image, drag that into the overlay. And uh, from here, we might also go reasoning like, okay, other than the image, we might want to have a few sections of the card that displays different things. Like maybe we have a, a header on the card, maybe we have a an image that displays the card in some way, and then maybe a description of what the card does or something like that. Uh, so that sounds like we have three different sections that we want to have in a vertical sequence. For that reason, a vertical box seems like a good object to uh, put in next in our overlay. So we have our image and we have our vertical box and they are both taking up the same space for now. Uh, inside of the vertical box, we might want to have what we talked about earlier. We might want to have a header, we might want to have a um, an image, uh, something like that. So uh, what we could do is we could have uh, size boxes again, so we can control the actual uh, height of these things. So if we type in size, we can drag in a size box into the vertical box. Let's actually drag in three of them. So we have one for the header, one for the image, and one for uh, the description. So that's what these different boxes will contain. Uh, so the first one, the header, it's going to be a text. So we'll just drag a text into the first vertical box. Uh, second, we'll have an image for our card. So we'll drag in an image into that size box. And thirdly, we will have text again because we have our description. So we'll drag that into the last box. So now we have a bunch of different elements and it just looks like a whole mess over here. So let's try to specify this a little bit so we can get our card to actually take shape. Starting off, let's go to our border. So our border, uh, let's pick a color like black or something like that. That will be fine, I think. Um, so what we want to do is we want to uh, have a black background sort of uh, border color that we want to have uh, with round edges. So we'll go to our brush and we'll change the draw as from image to rounded box. Uh, we'll change the tint of it from white to black by dragging over here like so. Now you can see that our texts are showing up in our uh, card here. We'll open up the outline settings over here and change the rounding type from half height radius to fixed radius. And if we zoom in on our uh, different corners here, now you can see that we will be able to get some values depending on the cone radius that we are choosing over here. So you can fill in these values and each of these values represent one corner. So the first value here is the corner up in the left. So if we choose something like, yeah, I don't know, let's try um, 20. You can see that if we go over here, we have gotten a sort of rounded uh, characteristic here behind the elements over there. 
So for me that round let, roundness looks fine. So let's choose that for all the four different colors. I have colors corners. Now you can see that we have sort of rounded corners here, which gives it a sort of Magic the Gathering kind of look or something uh, in a modern card game. Next, let's start working on our different categories of our card. So we go to our size box, uh, which represents our header right here. And this one, we can say we want to have a certain height. So we can override the height. We can say we want to have something, I don't know, 40. Uh, so now we have a current uh, size of 40 over here. Uh, so this uh, makes sure that this segment of our card will take up that much space, which means that we can have a sort of a granular control over how much the different parts take up. Moving to the next size box, which is the one for our uh, image, we can override its height and set some value that we want to have, for example 200 or something like that. Now these are just values that I have uh, chosen. You can choose something else that fits better for your layout, of course. That's that's not really uh, important. And you can always change this later on also to just get the feel that you want to uh, when you're done with the whole functionality of the card system and just want to change your UI parts. Going to our last size box, we can override its height as well and put in something like, I don't know, 200. So now we have a sort of grouping here of uh, areas of what we have available to make use of. Next we'll sort out our uh, image that represents our background. Uh, first of all we can change this from being image 33 up here, we can change it to a name that's a little bit better, so maybe uh, background color image and make sure that it is set as a variable so we can make use of it later. Uh, we want to expand this so it takes up all the space that it's allowed to take up. So currently this is this amount of space. And what we can do is we can from here go and say that we want to open up the brush. We want to change the color and opacity. Uh, not, not the tint. The color and opacity is what we want to change over here. And let's say we want to put it to black. <clears throat> um, Let's, in addition to that, also change it drawing to a rounded box, just like we did by our border. And let's change the settings to be 20 for all of those outlines as well. That should be fine, I think, which should uh, be consistent with the, the, the edges that we created for the border. Now we can see that the uh, the text blocks on the images are not taking up the full space here and that is because if we choose our vertical box here we can see that it has alignment set to the left and to the top. If we ch instead cho choose uh, horizontal alignment to fill horizontally this will make sure that it uh, makes use of all the horizontal spacage that we have. Next we can go to our text for our header over here and we can choose a name for it, maybe something like uh, card name text, something descriptive of what it's going to be. And make it a variable so we can access it later because we will be overwriting these uh, values depending on uh, uh, data that we are funneling around. Now it is set to uh, take up the full space horizontally and vertically. Uh, it, it, it might be what you want to have, it depends a little bit. You can play around with the different alignments here to have it align horizontally or vertically in different ways depending on how you want the text to appear. Uh, for me, I think I will have it uh, left aligned horizontally and probably uh, align it bottom against the image itself and have that as the actual text. Uh, as for the text itself, I will have a placeholder called card name, just so we can see sort of what it would be uh, looking like when it was to be used. And then we can also go in and change our fonts, make it a different size, make it look differently. We could choose a different uh, font if we have one. For me, I'm just going to be changing the, the card size for now. I think that this looks uh, pretty good. For the image, We'll just go and click on it and uh, choose a new name. So let's say, well, let's call it the uh, card image. Super straightforward name. Uh, going to the last part here, we have the description over here. We can type in something, I don't know. Th there, there are um, 
example text you can google up that uh, will give you something like uh, lorem ipsum dolor blah 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 there there's like uh, specific lines of texts that are meant to sort of uh, give you a good feeling of what real text would look like because it has words of different sizes and structures that sort of resembles a lot of different uh, languages uh, for our purposes just having something like this repeating probably is fine uh, which means that we get this sort of effect um, so first off we might want to change the size so the header was 18 so the description should, pro should probably be 18 or less i think um, so that that should solve it feeling like congruent with the card name itself because if you have a description that's larger than the header it sort of gives you a weird feeling but this is of course completely up to you the most glaring problem that we have right now of course is that our texts are escaping the bounds of our card so what we want to do now is we want to wrap the text making sure that it fits within inside of its confines uh, so if we scroll down we should have a wrapping category here and the auto wrap text uh, selecting that will make sure that the text clips when um, it comes to a edge on the end in a horizontal fashion like this the follow-up problem for this of course is that now we have it extending outside in the the vertical axis which is probably something you don't want to have uh, what we can do for this is we can actually uh, clip this uh, making it so that it doesn't uh, go outside of its area that it's allowed to be. Uh, so under the clipping here we can go and say something like clip the bounds which will make sure that it won't show any text outside of the bounds of the, the card itself. Now uh, obviously if you have text inside of this box you don't want to cut out things uh, if you have something that you want to write in the description you obviously want to make sure that it fits all of it uh, but since this is just an example text this is for uh, the purposes of looking a little bit neater but uh, yeah obviously a description text should be fully uh, allowed to be shown inside of the card so you have to make sure that you have a font that's uh, large or small enough to to have that fit inside the last part we need to do now is we need to make sure that our description is bound as a variable so that we can actually change that later on and we will change this to be called something like uh, card description text something of that nature so you, so you know what it is when you're working with it. and then we can compile and save and now we have more or less what our card should look like and again this is something that you can modify further later on of course all right so now we have our card sort of done how are we going to be using this so the way i imagine this is if we're going to have a hand of cards we might want to have a specific widget that is the card hand essentially and then that card hand will handle these other widgets which will be the cards and then the card hand itself we will just put somewhere on our main HUD element, whichever that is, and sort of have it placed wherever we want it to be placed. Um, so let's actually create our card hand then. So we'll do something similar. We'll go to user interface and widget blueprint and user widget. Call this W underscore uh, card hand. Opening up that, this is what we're presented with and we don't need a whole lot here i think we can have something like a size box in case we wanted to again control it like uh, width and height size if we wanted to later on uh, for now i think it's fine to just have it unspecified because i don't really have a need to do that right now and other than that we might want to have an overlay so that we can place things somewhere on this overlay uh, as we need them to. So this is where our cards will essentially be appearing in different forms. Now the overlay will be the sort of area where we will be creating and putting the cards. So this is where we will be making use of our slots to interact with, which, mean, which means that this overlay area is something that we likely want to have as a variable so we can access it. We can call it card overlay and make sure it's a variable. 
and compile and save. So we will be having a lot of logic in this later on. For now, this is going to be fairly simple when it comes to the UI part. Uh, because this hand will sort of act as a manager for all of the different logic that will happening will be happening between the hand and the cards, sort of. Um, to demonstrate how this would be looking, if we just go over here to our widgets, user created, we could take something like our card widget, place it in the card overlay, and this is sort of what it would be looking like. So if we have our uh, widget over here, we could have it. Uh, appear in different places and depending on our positioning of it and uh, just move it around. So th this is the size it will have currently to the, the overlay. So you can use this as a demonstration to see um, what it will look like um, and then have it move around if you want to have it like display different uh, areas. You could have it transformed, for example, you can move it, uh, I don't know, 500 to the right and then have another one in here you can see sort of what it looks like with multiple cards in there for now we'll uh, remove those again and instead start working on our last ui uh, component which will be our hud so our hud will just be a user interface like before and the user widget call this w underscore card hud opening that up we will be using a canvas for this I tend to like canvases uh, whenever I can, uh, but they are something that should be avoided because they are uh, requiring more performance in general. But as the only UI element that's going to be making use of it, I think one canvas is fine. Canvas allows us to have a lot of control and granularity when it comes to different objects if we want to place them pixel perfect in the, the scene without having uh, lots of other elements uh, structuring it up. Uh, but yeah, so what we want to have in the HUD here is essentially only our card hand, because that is what we will be uh, displaying in this um, uh, this UI element. And what we want to do here is we can say something like our card hand is supposed to be uh, maybe anchored in the bottom. So this element over here will say that it will take up the whole width but will be uh, set in the bottom. Our position uh, Y here needs to be reset so that it goes down to the bottom over here. And then we can say that we want to have a certain size when it comes to the Y. So maybe like 500, that means that we have now defined it in here that this is how much space it should be taking up. It is, however, small in the horizontal scale because we have an offset right here, which will be resetting to have it make use of that space. Uh, the offset right is actually still 100, so we'll put that down to zero so we can make use of the whole space. You can see that it is actually lying below our actual area for our HUD, and the reason for that is because we have an alignment that is by default zero, zero. So this is in the X direction and this is in the Y direction. If we put a one here, this means that it will be using above the pivot point here to uh, use its alignment in relation to the screen space. So this takes up the bottom half of our screen essentially, or bottom part at least, and this feels like it is uh, reasonable for something like a card hand. Now I have the idea also to have uh, some UI elements here available that allows us to quickly configure and adjust our card hand as we are working with it with a few different parameters. So to allow that, we will be adding some UI elements here for that purpose. So we'll starting off with a vertical box. And the vertical box is there because we want to have it, so sorry, sorry it's supposed to be on the canvas panel. Uh, the vertical box is supposed to be our sort of list of different options that we will be adding on later on. Uh, for these, we will start off with a button. This will be the first and most important part of this. So this button in the vertical box, uh, we can also put a text inside of it. Let's do that. So we'll drag that on top of the button. So the button here we can rename to something like um, add card button because that's what it will be doing. And because of that reason, we will change the text to also say add card and clicking on the button we can also choose to have it um, 
make sure that it fits everything inside of it. Because right now, if we look over here, we can see that uh, our button is smaller than our actual text. And our vertical box over here is uh, determining the size of the button uh, based on its size over here. Uh, but the text itself is expanding outside because the text is not being clipped like we did on our card earlier. This size to content here, if we click it, will allow us to take the vertical box and expand it so that it actually is big enough to fit everything inside of it, which is the largest um, object or, or component that's taking space. In this case, it was not the button, but the text itself. So it's made uh, the vertical box large enough for it to have the add card text here uh, with enough spacing on both the sides as well. We can immediately start working on some of the logic for this. So with our button selected, we can drop down here to the bottom and we can see that there are these different uh, events that we can um, implement. So on clicked, clicking on that will give us an event for when someone clicks the button for us to react on in some manner. So in essence, what we want to do here is when we click this button, we want to generate a card and give it to our card hand. Um, we have a reference to our card hand here in the form of our widget. And we could now essentially communicate with it and say that we want to add a card. We don't have any functionality in our card hand currently to allow adding of a card. But we can start doing so by uh, creating a Blueprint interface so that we have an easy way to communicate without having to um, define what we are sending, uh, the objects that we're sending information to. So we will be going here and going on the Blueprints and Blueprint interface and call this BPI and we can call this, I don't know, add card. Uh, this will be a pretty small interface. It will only have the function of adding a card. Opening it up, we can just add a function called add card. And when it comes to inputs and outputs, we don't really have anything defined right now. We don't know what a card looks like. Compiling and saving for now, this is fine. We can just go here and drag and say add card. And you can see that the, the blueprint interface add card appears here with us sending a message which means that we're currently now trying to send a message of adding a card to the card hand. So that's a start. Now we need to define what kind of information will we be having inside of a card? What will we be funneling to the card hand about describing what the card is? So let's create some information for it. Uh, we'll go out here to the content browser and we'll go to blueprints again. In the bottom of the blueprints category, we have something called a structure. A structure is a set of different variables that you can have contained into a grouping. We call this an S underscore uh, card info. I feel that that is a descriptive name for this. Inside of the card info, we want to have the information for the card, obviously. So what are those things going to be? Well, starting off, card name might be something that's reasonable for all of them. So we can just say card name and change the type to something like a text. So that will be the header or the name of the card. We can add another variable for more things. Maybe we want to have information about the image that we talked about earlier. So we'll do image. And for this, we can choose a texture 2D object reference. That did not want to work. Let's try that again. Object reference, there we go. So now we can send in an image here as well, technically. So we had also another field, which was the description. So let's try that one as well. Card description. And that one we can choose a text for as well. And in addition to that, we could also make it something that's a little bit fancy and makes it easier to distinguish when we have different cards as well. So we'll add a different variable here, which we will call our background color. And this one we will choose to type uh, linear color. So now we have four different variables. And of course, you can always expand upon this further if you want to have a more complex card system, of course. Uh, but for us, this will be fine. So we'll close down the card info for now because we're, we're done with it so far. 
So now that we have defined the structure for the card, we can actually add this as an input for our uh, user interface. So we'll choose the um, s underscore card info. So it has that as a struct, and we can just say that this is the card info that we're sending in. Compiling and saving, and going back to our card HUD, we can now see that the structure has been added to our method call here. So now we just need to create these card infos. Uh, one way we could do this in a sort of uh, uh, modular and expandable way is we could create a data table for us to handle or have all the cards stored. So we'll right click and do that. So we'll go to miscellaneous and we'll go to a data table. The data table needs to have a structure to define which different fields it should be containing. And we created our struct called card info and make use of that for our data table. We'll name the data table DT for data table and call it cards. Opening that up, we have this to work with now. So let's add, let's say, four different cards here. So we'll start off with adding four different rows. The leftmost row is the, the actual um, key for the card. So it could be something like the card name itself, if you have unique card names. Uh, we'll call this one blue card, because it will be easier to see uh, the relationship between the different colors that we'll have as background colors. And all right, to, to rename one of these, you can just select the row and press F2. We'll call the next one red card. We'll call the third one green card. Not to be mistaken for getting entry into the United States. We'll rename the fourth card, call it a yellow card. There we go. So now we have the different names for these. Now we need to populate what they're actually containing. So we can just go to one of these rows and we can fill in some card information. So the first card name might be like, I don't know, a fancy card. And for an image, we can choose something like the AI spawn point. Just we have something as sort of a placeholder. You might actually have real nice images to put here. Uh, card description, we can say a very fancy card. And then we have for the color down here, we can choose something that is blue since we call this a blue color. And we'll drag this one up here so it's blue, something like that. And have the alpha set to one, I guess. Something like that. So now we have our first card created here. So now we'll continue with the next one. Clicking the next card, we can choose a new name. We can call this one a weak card. We can choose a different image for it. Let's go with... I think I saw a speaker at some point here. Do we have a speaker? Um, was it something sound? Eh, let's take this one movable, I guess. That's, I don't know. I'm just picking images here that I think had like enough fidelity to possibly look nice. Uh, anyway, let's have a description. Uh, this card is weak. Don't let it carry your stuff. Uh, for a color, we can choose something that is red, since that's the name of the card. And an alpha one. Became sort of pinkish, but that, that's fine, I think. As for name, we can call this uh, sweet card. We can choose a name, we can choose an image. Let's take the Android icon. As for description, let's say, what does mine say? That's the wrong character because I'm on the wrong language. There we go. And for color, we can choose green. All right. Lastly, we'll go to the yellow card. We can call this one powerful card. We can choose a icon, maybe a camera. We can choose a description. It is over 9,000. 
we can choose a color. Let's choose the yellow one to actually not be liars, like so. Okay, we can now save this. And we have now created four example cards for our deck to make use of. That is awesome. How do we actually make use of this now? Well, in our card hood, we could now theoretically fill these, but we need to get this information somehow from our data table. The way we're going to do that is we're going to be creating a function library because we're going to have a function that might be useful for many different places, but we don't want to use it just here. Uh, so placing it into a function library allows it to be used elsewhere, which is good and handy. So going to blueprints and blueprint function library, we'll call this BPFL for just that and call it cards. Opening that up, we can now create a function. Let's call it uh, get random card. So this function will return a card at random from our database tables. We know the output, the output is going to be of the type s card info. Now, how do we get that card info? We might want to change the name also, call this card info. So getting this information from the data table, we can right click and type in data table and you'll get a bunch of different uh, functions that are available to us for this. Uh, since we want to get one random, we need to get, first of all, all the ones that are available to us. So we want to get all the table row names, like this. Hook it up, choose our table, which is the DT, DT cards. So now we'll get an array of all the different uh, card keys in this table. From this, we can just type in and say random, and it'll get a random one for us here. Then we want to make use of that specific name that we have to actually read out from the data table what other information is available for that key. So we'll right click, get table again, no not get table, uh, type in data table. And you can see that we have a few different things here. We have the does table exist, we get table column and string, we get the um, table row names. But what we want to do is get a specific table row. And that one is here on the bottom. So get table row, we choose the data table. It wants a row name, it gives us the options of the one we have available, but the one that we want to use is the one that we have gotten from here. So we'll hook them up like so. And if we have a row found, we'll send out that information here. Now we could be uh, a bit explicit and show that this is also what could happen if we don't actually find the row. Shouldn't be possible considering this but might be good anyway. You don't need to hook this up because it will uh, automatically end as a return regardless. But now we have a function here at least. Saving compiling and we go back to our HUD again. We can now type in right click and type uh, get random card. You can see that in our blueprint function library we have our function to get the cards. The issue here now, or not issue really, but we can see that this one has an input and an output. I don't really want that. So we can go to our blueprint function library, we can choose the function and we can uh, check the pure. This makes this a pure function, which allows it to look like it has no execution pin. So this information will only be retrieved whenever it is actually being called upon. Like for example, when this node happens, then it will go and find this information. It makes it a little bit easier to view uh, instead of having a lot of long execution pins through a lot of different nodes, in my opinion. So now, theoretically, we are getting a random card. We are sending it to our uh, card hand, which is over here. But our card hand currently doesn't know this function. It has no idea what that works like. The reason for this is we have created a blueprint interface, but we're not actually implementing it in the card hand. So we'll go to our card hand. We open up a graph, we go to class settings, and we go down to over here where it says, uh, no, not class settings, class defaults. No, sorry, not class, class, definitely this. Uh, interfaces, here we are. Sorry about that. So implemented inf interfaces here is empty. We want to click add, and we want to add our BPI add card. Now we have the interface added to the class, but we're not implementing it yet. We want to right click over here on add card, which appears under the interface category and implement event. Now this will be called 
when the HUD is uh, calling that function. To test this out, we can do a print here. Print string that says hello. That should be good enough for now. Our card, card HUD over here, calling the add card on our card info, or on our card hand widget, which is fine. Uh, but now we need to actually make use of this card HUD somewhere. And currently we do not have any way of doing that. We don't have any controller or anything like that to um, have this communicate through. So let's actually create that as well now then. So we go to blueprint class and we go to play controller and we call this BP underscore card controller. So now we have a card controller. Inside of the card controller, we go to our event graph. We can say that when begin play happens, we want to create our widget. Create widget. It should be of the type card hud that we created earlier. Uh, the owning player here is the controller that this belongs to. Since this is a controller, we'll just hook in self over there. Now we created the widget. Now we need to add, need to, add it to our viewport. So we'll just type in add viewport and this should be added to our viewport now. However, if we were to start playing now, this would not work because this game mode uh, doesn't actually have our uh, settings for it. So we go to project settings and we go to maps and modes. We can see that we have a game mode base here and it has these default values here. We can't change these because this is not a class that we have created. So these are the things that will be used. Uh, so to make remedy of this, we will create a game mode as well. Blueprint class can go to game mode base and we'll create, uh, call it BP underscore card game mode. Now opening up the game mode, you can see that we have the information that we sort of had in the project settings. And as far as player control class goes, we want to change it to our card controller. Now that we have this here, the game mode has our settings, but this level doesn't have our settings. We could override the game mode and have it use our card game mode over here, which means that only this level would make use of it. Or we could go to our project settings we had and make sure that our default game mode is our card game mode, which means that that would be the default in all the different levels unless they're being overridden over here. And this will be fine for us. So we set it in the project settings, so it's going to be used for now. Sorry for the cut. I had an Unreal Engine crash. Hopefully I didn't lose too much, but this is a good reminder for you to always save often. So you can uh, always save from um, either file, save all, have the or the uh, quick command for it, or you can find it down in the content browser to save all. Uh, usually very good to do often, of course. So let's actually press play and see what happens. So uh, now that we play, we can see it doesn't seem to be happening a whole lot. However, in the top left corner, we can see that our add card button is actually. So we know that the HUD has loaded up properly, which is good. Clicking on the button, you can also see that it types out hello. So we actually know that the communication from the HUD button to the so-called card hand is actually working. And we have that part working now. So that's nice. It's a good start. In this episode, we have designed our card. It has a visual sort of like this. It doesn't have a whole lot of logic behind it yet, but this is what we have. We also designed the card hand, which is a very simple container with some basic logic, just showing us that we can communicate with it from the card HUD. The card HUD we designed with a button with some basic functionality of communicating to the widget that is our card hand. In addition to that, we also created a data table for some example cards. We created a game mode and a card controller to be able to just do some basic things. We created a function library with a random card function within it. And in addition to that, we also created a blueprint interface and we created a structure for our card info. And I think I'm missing something here. Maybe that is all. Anyway, so that's all for this first part, the designing part of this. And uh, yeah, keep on learning. Take care.
hopefully found this video helpful if you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you have down below subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future that is all for now keep on learning take care